Hey out there YouTube, how we doing today? Well, we've got an incredible video for you today. I told you about this one little bit ago. It's time to revisit the Ethan Grow 0456. You're really going to watch this one want to watch this one all the way through. So stay tuned right after we roll that intro and we're going to get into it. there guys thank you for saying past that intro that's right today we're gonna unveil the results of the PMI test now PMI stands for positive material identification if I got that correctly now all of this started because of a review I did on this blade that you're gonna find right up there now as I promised in that video if I was wrong in any way I'm gonna apologize Please remember that, okay? Now, this blade retails for like $26.99 online. They advertise it as D2 steel in G10 handles. Well, excuse me, scales. Now, I'm going to pause it here for a second, and I'm going to show you a photo of the one that got tested. Not, you know, the blade itself, but... You know, the order, how I ordered, whatever, that way you can see it. That way we're clear about everything. So here comes that picture right about now. Now, as you saw in there, it says D2 steel, you know, ceramic bearings and G10 handles. Okay, so I have my issues with it, especially for the cost, and especially what a single billet of D2 steel costs. Just getting a blank to make a knife out of is pretty spendy. Now, my review of this one, and I'm going to say right up front, like I did in my channel review I posted a little bit ago, you can see that right up there. I was, how should we say, um, jaded by the fact it's a knockoff. It's a knockoff of the Zero Tolerance 0456, okay? I'll say once again, I can't afford damn near 300 bucks for a folding blade, so I'll never have a Zero Tolerance 0456. I won't. This is a knockoff of it. Now, the fit and finish... Just, you know, especially like when you have it closed, first thing you're going to notice is the anodized little, how should we say, screws here. And the anodized little clip. I like the fact they did that. It feels good in the hand. Now, after digging through over about 100 Amazon reviews, and especially when I sent this to the lab, I didn't even really... Pick up on this last time. Now I gotta use a flashlight. I don't know if you can see in there too well. I'm hoping you can. There's not a liner on one side of this. On the other side it's there. Pretty much clear as day. This side it's not. So in essence you're putting pretty much the integrity of the handle on the G10. That makes me go, what the hell? Alright, now I had another reviewer basically tell me because mine was opening slow, I had to reposition my finger. Alright, it opens a little quicker than the last time. Now, with all that that happened, I was, especially after if you've read all the feedback, all the negative connotations and everything else, I had a viewer reach out. His name's Kurt Williams. Kurt, brother, I love you. I love what you've done, especially for this video. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. He suggested, hey, send me the blade. Let's do a PMI data on it. You know, PMI report. Excuse me. Now, I didn't send him this one. This was the one from the first video. 
I bought an identical one, as you saw in that previous photo that was posted, and sent it to him. I opened it out of the box to make sure it was the same blade. You know, there was no discolorations, anything else. And it was the same exact thing. And it was, so, you know, got it, packaged it up, sent it off. Now, I have never witnessed the PMI done in person before, ever. I could not witness this one face-to-face. -face, and I got to say, Kurt sent me a lot of photos, all right? <coughs> this video, you're going to see a lot of those. Now, what I love is this next photo I'm going to show you. Basically, they put a little pinprick right up here that they drill into. That way, they can analyze the data from the blade. Now, I'm going to pause it here in a second so you can see that blade that I sent him on the drill. So, here we go. That was kind of cool. It shows everything there. Now I'm going to pause it again here in a second. He took a picture like I asked him to. So you can see the hole. So here we go. Now I thought that was kind of cool. You can visibly see the little pinprick hole in there. So I don't know because when I sent it to him. I'll be honest, I didn't recognize, realize or whatever if there was anything different right through here. It looked the exact same to me, so I don't know if he put a little bit of paint or whatever right along there. So if he did, hey Kurt, leave a comment down below, brother. Because I'm kind of curious why yours seemed a little bit blacker through here than mine did. But anywho. Now, we're going to put two photos back to back. Basically, of the blade being scanned. And a close-up of that. Because I want honor, integrity, I want truth right here. So we're going to load those photos right now. Now that's kind of cool, all right? I think it's, you know, fantastic that here you are, a little machine, right in there. You can't fake that data. And trust me, he sent me a lot of photos. I got some of the best ones and put them on here for you. Now, here we go. We're going to post the results. All right. Now, I want to preface it like this. The PMI data is only as good as the information it has in its database. As I stated in that update, his PMI machine has D2 steel. It's there. He's got it. So if it's D2, it should register, right? So I had him scan it once. And thankfully, he did a second scan, you know, so no one can go, oh, you're faking that, you're faking that, you're faking that. So I'm going to post the results of those scans right now. I thought that was interesting as heck okay it breaks everything down now I gotta tell you this PMI data um, scan it costs anywhere between three to five hundred bucks to get it done the only other method that I can show you and prove what those pictures just showed and I'm gonna show you a close-up of both scans in just a moment okay is to basically remove this melt it down to its base elements and then molecularly scan molecular molecularly whatever scan those all right and i'm not putting out that money for a 26 dollar blade so i'm going to show you the close-ups of both of those scans So there we go, guys. There's proof it's not D2 steel. It's stainless steel. Well, 410 stainless steel. 410, 420 stainless steel. 
Now that steel is a general purpose Martin Setic, I hope I'm saying that right, stainless steel containing 11% chromium. And they said it's got great corrosion resistance. Now, before any of you go, oh, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. He doctored the results. He did this. He did that. He did whatever. We took it one step further. You're now going to see the results of a Best Tech Paladin scan. That is a known D2 steel. So here we go. Now, if you're not even really knowing what you're looking at, I'm going to show you a close-up of that scan that shows you exactly what the steel was right now. Do you see the difference? That registered pop, D2. No problem. I think it went like D2, 3, 4. Huge freaking difference between stainless steel 410 slash 20 and you notice on those other scans it was like a fraction of a result difference but it's still not d2 so i'm gonna put it like this i'm sorry that's g10 scales it's lower quality g10 but it's g10 that is not D2. That is 410 slash 20 stainless steel. So for that, I'm sorry. For that, my gut was right. So now we're going to hit pause on this for a second because I want to say a couple things, but I want to switch angles and I'm kind of tired of holding this thing. So one moment. All right. Sorry about that. So. Here we go. This thing is seriously my most liked and my most hated video, period. All right. I'm going to say it like this. For its price point, it's not a bad blade. 29 bucks. You have a daily carry. It's going to go through paper. It's going to go through some cardboard. It's going to open boxes. And it's even going to cut some cord, no problem. It's not D2. I don't like the fact they ripped it off and they're falsely marketing it as D2. Now, before anybody even says anything else, <clears throat> I had him email me everything. That way I could get the results quickly and I could get this video up to you. He's being very kind and he's going to mail me, that's Kurt, by the way, is going to mail me the hard copies of the results. That way I've got them here. I have no reason to fake any of this. I have no reason to even sit and go, ha, 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 I'm right. My gut was right. Okay. So you heard me apologize. I didn't talk about the fit and finish, like I said before in that, you know, channel update. You heard me apologize because it's actually G10, lower scale G10, but it's G10 scales. But the blade I'm 100% correct on. It is not D2 steel. So let's wrap this up, Jerry Springerish. Guys, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your comments. I even appreciate your anger feedback. To the person who called me xenophobic, if you're watching this, hey, Dillhole, I know that most companies manufacture their blades in China. It's very rare that a major company manufactures back here in the United States. And if they do, you see it on the blade. I'm not xenophobic. I get that the Chinese and certain Oriental people can look at a blade, and it's well proven, so I'm not being a racist prick here, can look at a blade and they can reverse manufacture it. That's awesome. I love the fact they can look at a picture, they can give you fit, finish measurements, they can give you anything else just by me doing this. I think that's freaking cool. I think that's how advanced some people are, and I think that's awesome, the mathematics they can do. But. As I said in my channel update, I will not buy another clone that I know is actually a clone. I have one video that I shot that maybe that blade's a clone. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm doing more research into it. It's already shot. I already bought it. I think there's some phenomenal blades coming out of China at an incredible price point.
That would be um, the review I also did on the Tuya knife. Put a link up there. Okay. All I can say is it's okay to have different opinions. It's okay to disagree with stuff. And it's okay to have a very spirited conversation. But at the end of the day, you're leaving me comments like, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't do that, fuck you, I'll never be back, don't come back. I don't want you around here. But that being said, hey, if you're a first time viewer of this channel and you're watching this one, you picked a hell of a blade to start with, man. So somewhere around these corners, you're going to see a little company logo popping up. Go ahead and click on that. That's going to bring you right to subscribe. I get to do this stuff because of subscribers like you and viewers like you. I think it's phenomenal that you're taking time out of your day to do it. Now, after you've clicked on that little subscribe, please click on the bell icon that is right next to it. That's going to bring you right to a notification that's going to tell you every single time we upload a video. Now, speaking of videos, somewhere over here, I may change it up, I may not, but you can see two, two over here. Those are going to be videos that YouTube is going to select from a catalog of videos that they think are going to be a good viewing experience for you. But there we go, guys. Scientific proof. It's not D2 steel. My gut was correct. My instincts were correct. And I appreciate everyone who's watched that video. I appreciate everyone who's going to watch that video. And everyone who's checking this one out. Thank you for watching one of the weirdest videos I've had to upload. And I hope you guys have a great and incredible rest of your day.